We constantly seek direction from the Lord on how we can help our members keep the commandments of God, especially those two great commandments, to love God and our neighbors. We will implement a newer, holier approach to caring and ministering to others. The First Presidency and the Twelve are united. Gratefully and prayerfully, we open this new chapter in the history of the Church. What we intend is for the Lord's Church to be more effective in carrying out its divinely assigned mission to bring to pass the eternal life of God's children. We have learned that the Lord intends for there to be greater, more focused caring for others in His Church by His chosen shepherds. As the work of quorums and auxiliaries matures institutionally, it follows that we should mature personally as well. Individually, rising above any mechanical function without feeling routine to the heartfelt discipleship articulated by the Savior at the conclusion of his earthly ministry. Love one another as I have loved you. Sometimes we think we have to do something grand and heroic to count as serving our neighbors, yet simple acts of service can have profound effects on others as well as on ourselves. What did the Savior do? He also smiled at, talked with, walked with, listened to, made time for, encouraged, taught, fed, and forgave. He served family and friends, neighbors and strangers alike, and he invited acquaintances and loved ones to enjoy the rich blessings of his gospel. Those simple acts of service and love provide a template for our ministering today. Ministering looks like going for a walk, getting together for a game night, offering service or even serving together. It looks like delivering a birthday card and cheering at a soccer game. In addition to whatever schedule you establish for actual visits, that calendar can be supplemented with telephone calls, written notes, texts, emails, video chats, conversations at church meetings, shared service projects, social activities, a host of possibilities in the world of social media. It looks like sharing a scripture or quote from a conference talk that would be meaningful to that individual. It looks like discussing a gospel question and sharing testimony to bring clarity and peace. It looks like becoming part of someone's life and caring about him or her. I warn you, a new name, new flexibility, fewer reports will not make one ounce of difference in our service unless we see this as an invitation to care for one another in a bold, new, holier way. Another blessing of these inspired announcements is the opportunity for young women ages 14 to 18 to participate in ministering as companions to Relief Society Sisters, just as young men their age serve as ministering companions to Melchizedek Priesthood Brethren. May we labor side by side with the Lord of the Vineyard, giving the God and Father of us all a helping hand with his staggering task of answering prayers, providing comfort, drying tears, and strengthening feeble knees. If we'll do that, we will be more like the true disciples of Christ we are meant to be. Our message to the world is simple and sincere. We invite all of God's children on both sides of the veil to come unto their Savior, receive the blessings of the Holy Temple, have enduring joy, and qualify for eternal life.